Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We haven't looked at the NVIDIA GeForce Now game streaming service in a while, so we're going to do an update today to see what's new with it. And what's neat about this service is that it allows you to spin up high-end NVIDIA gaming hardware in NVIDIA's cloud for a monthly fee, of course. And that gives you the ability to play some games with their highest settings and frame rates without having to invest in a very expensive gaming PC. They've done a lot to cut down on the lag over the years. It's feeling pretty good now. And we'll take a look and see how it runs on some higher end hardware that I have here in the house. But we'll also spend some time running games on this very low end hardware with my favorite little GM K-Tech mini PC that you can get for around 160 bucks or so. So we're going to have some fun here checking out some of the improvements with GeForce Now, including their 5080 support. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that NVIDIA provided a free ultimate subscription to the channel free of charge. We do spin up GeForce Now quite frequently when we're reviewing low-end hardware to see how it handles game streaming. However, no other compensation was received. They are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what GeForce Now is looking like with their latest updates. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, there are over 4,000 games available on GeForce Now. However, those games do not come with the subscription. You have to quote unquote own them to the extent that we own anything anymore on a supported platform. So right now, GeForce Now supports Ubisoft, Battle.net, EA, GOG, Epic Game Store, Steam, and Xbox. So if you bought a game on one of these platforms and it's supported for streaming, it will show up in your library. So here I've got 279 games available to me across all the different platforms that I linked up with GeForce Now. Of note, this also works with your Game Pass subscription. Just keep piling those subscriptions on. So if you have an Xbox Game Pass subscription that has the PC component to it, the PC Game Pass games will link up and be playable through GeForce Now. And you can play those games in 4K with all of the features that GeForce Now offers for your graphical robustness. So you can get a very nice experience with your Game Pass games, much better than what you would get with Microsoft's version of the streaming service. So that's pretty cool. And they've got all sorts of different ways you can filter things here. So I've got mine filtered by last played right now. I can look at games that are the most popular on the platform. I can also take a look and just see what's available through my Xbox account. So these are all the current games that are available through Xbox Game Pass along with maybe the one or two that I've purchased over the years. So pretty cool way to see what's available here. Unfortunately, not every game developer allows their games to be streamed. We've talked about this before. So if the developer hasn't cleared uh, their little check mark for game streaming on the platform, that game will not be available on GeForce Now. But for games that are supported, the experience is really good these days on GeForce Now. So what I did earlier is I used my gaming PC upstairs that has a 4K 120 Hertz monitor. And here you can see that we were able to take advantage of the new RTX 5080 features and play Cyberpunk here at uh, its full settings at 4K 120. Now, of course, we didn't get up to 120 frames per second. We got close in a couple of areas here. Uh, but as you can see, it's well north of 100 frames per second, both on the server and also streaming into our computer here. They have a really cool statistics page that you can pull down. It does block some of the gameplay, but it gives you a very good overview of your current connection situation and how well everything is working. It will stream at up to 100 megabits per second. I saw it going up to maybe 60 or so maximum. And when you are streaming 4K at these high frame rates, you definitely want to use an Ethernet connection because Wi-Fi just can't keep up with this. And maybe it can in certain circumstances, but if you've got other people in the house using the Wi-Fi or any kind of interference, it's going to become an issue. So you definitely want Ethernet here. Now for that game, I had things set to the custom setting where I had it locked in at a 4K resolution. I think I set the maximum bit rate all the way up to 100 megabits per second. And I also was able to take advantage of variable refresh rate features on my display because it supported G-Sync. So if you have a display that supports G-Sync, maybe you've got an older display and an older GeForce GPU, the native client on Windows supports that. So you can get very good experiences streaming games over the internet with very, very low latency. Now where I am in Connecticut, the closest server to me is their New Jersey data center. 
And there, as you can see, I was getting about 11 to 12 milliseconds of ping rate uh, back and forth to their server. So very good low latency connection here. I'm on Comcast. I'm using Comcast fiber optic service called Gigabit uh, Pro. However, this also has some optimizations for those of you on regular coax Comcast connections, and NVIDIA made some deal with Comcast to cut down the latency. So all in, at least on Comcast in my testing, it was very good, but your distance to the data center and how many hops your ISP is taking to get there will impact the latency. But at least in my area here, it felt very, very close to the desktop experience, especially when using keyboard and mouse. Now you might have noticed on the stats page there that No Man's Sky was running with a 4080 and not the 5080. And the reason is, is that there's only a select number of games right now that support the 5080. And the server you're connecting has to have the 5080 hardware available. So right now it's a pretty short list. So as you saw, Cyberpunk that we were looking at first that did have support for that 5080, which was why we were able to use it. But if you're not playing one of these games, you will be on the 4080 tier, which of course is no slouch and certainly better than what I have here at the house currently for my gaming PC. Now games like Cyberpunk are part of the ready to play set of games available on GeForce Now. This means you don't have to adjust any settings, you don't have to worry about storage or anything. GeForce Now takes care of all of that. But they added a new feature recently called Install to Play. And if I pull out my filters here and go to Type and select Install to Play, you'll see my list here gets a lot shorter. And these are games that I have in one of my supported libraries that are not optimized for GeForce Now, are not necessarily supported on GeForce Now, but the developers indicated they're okay with people streaming them. So what NVIDIA is doing now is they're giving you 500 gigabytes of cloud storage to download these games and play them in the cloud. When you boot them up, they're not gonna be optimized for the best settings all the time, so you will probably have to go in and adjust some of the graphics. Uh, but what'll happen here when I click install is that I'm going to be brought to my Steam desktop interface where the installation will proceed here. So this is very much like running Steam on your own local computer, but it is uh, currently running here in the cloud. So I'm going to install it. And what this will do is it will install on my 500 gigabyte allocation here. And if I go home to my library, you can see, I'll pull up my other screen here. Uh, you can see that I've got a, another game that I installed earlier. So it's basically gonna download it like it would on desktop. And once that download is complete, you can spin the game up and play it over your GeForce Now account. But again, the performance may not be optimized for the experience, so you will have to go in and tweak things a bit. So now let's play some games on some low-end hardware. I've got this little GMK Tech Mini PC playing Doom Dark Ages. This is on my uh, Game Pass account. And as you can see here, the latency doesn't feel all that bad here. And we are streaming at 4K60, and that is what this little PC is outputting to this 4K display. I'll give you a closer view in here. So as you can see, we've got a good frame rate here. We don't have any issues with lag or stuttering because we are connected over ethernet. Uh, this is set to the cinematic preset. So we are getting about 100 megabits per second down from the NVIDIA server. And we're maintaining the same ping rate, about 11 milliseconds that I was maintaining on my higher end hardware upstairs. Again, we're connected up uh, via Ethernet here. So this is a good experience, even on a sub $200 PC connected to an older 4K60 display here. It is a, a way to play some of these games that this PC would never hope to run, and it is running them quite well. Now I'm using the native Windows client here. They have clients for Windows and Mac, and then other platforms can work through a web browser. And what I'll do here is just pause it real quick and show you if we go into the settings screen here, uh, you can use the microphone on your system for in-game chat. Uh, it's got some abilities to take screenshots here and record the screen. So it's got a lot of good features here built right in uh, that give you the full gaming experience. And uh, again, I'm pretty impressed by how well it's all running here, even on very low end hardware. So I think if you've got like a mini PC with an N100 or something that you bought in the last three or four years, it should work fine. You might find yourself uh, with maybe some issues on some older hardware like Raspberry Pis, but uh, by and large here, it's been a great experience on low-end hardware uh, with minimal lag as you can see here.
Now, they also support mobile devices, including now a new native client on the Steam Deck, which is what I'm running here. The install process does take a little bit of effort. You have to go into desktop mode to get it working, but it's not hard to get it installed. And once installed, you can summon it from the gaming interface. And as you can see here, it's running quite nicely. Now, I only have the 60 hertz display, but it is supporting 90 frames per second here, as you can see. If you have the newer Steam Deck with the OLED display, it will support up to 90 frames per second. And because it runs at a lower resolution than the 4K example we were looking at earlier, you can probably get away with a Wi-Fi connection for this. So right now I'm connected to Wi-Fi. It's only needing about 20 megabits per second for this experience. So it looks like Wi-Fi is probably doable on handhelds like the Steam Deck or on your tablet or other mobile device. Now they offer three different tiers of service. They actually still maintain their free tier which gives you an hour to play around with a 1080p 60 server. And this is a good way to determine whether or not your network connection is going to be sufficient enough for the other tiers that you might want to subscribe to. The performance tier kind of sits in the middle, 1440p, 60 frames per second max. And of course, we were playing around with the ultimate tier, uh, which gives you that 50, 80 support and frame rates that can go up to 360 frames per second along with the 4K resolution. Now they offer an annual plan, which will save you a little bit of money versus the month to month. So 200 bucks gets you 12 months on the ultimate. Your game sessions can last eight hours, which is a good long time for me at least. Uh, so you do have the ability to essentially get yourself into a super high-end gaming PC, stream to you over the internet for far less than what it would cost new. They have the month to month plans here as well. And then you can also try a day pass uh, where you get 24 hours of access to either the premium or ultimate tiers. So there you go. That is GeForce Now as it exists in 2025. If you've got an older gaming PC, it will run very well with the service because you can take advantage of the variable refresh rates and other things. But even on low-end hardware, as we were experimenting with earlier, it's also a very good experience. So you could take your $150 PC and spin up essentially a 5080 in the cloud with very, very little latency. So all in, I'm very pleased with the developments they've made on it. Again, this will depend on where you're located and how many hops your ISP has to the NVIDIA servers. But if you have a good connection, it is a very good experience as we saw here. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.